Uh, okay, well, uh, this was the original uh, title for my, for my talk that was uh, Migrating the Invoicing System. Uh, but I was, uh, I was really thinking about, 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 the, about the talk and I think that a better one is uh, how to survive a rewrite. Okay, yeah, because it was a, was a really, really uh, great experience, but also very painful. So today I want to try to, to talk about more about that experience and hope that it can be helpful for you. So first, where? Uh, okay, let me t t uh, tell you something about, about, uh, about Mexico. And well, uh, that's, uh, that's the place, yeah, this is where I'm from, Mexico. And maybe some of you know more about Mexico because of the food. That's why I put uh, uh, some uh, map about the kind of tacos that you can, you can find uh, all over the place. Uh, maybe some of you know more about the uh, Chinampas, that's a place, uh, the, the name is Xochimilco. Uh, you can be... You can have fun a lot of, oh, over there. Uh, we also have a place that the name is Oaxaca. That's uh, really, also a very nice, nice place. Uh, maybe some of you know about the, the pyramids. So that's very close from Mexico City, in the north, in fact. Uh, and well, also in Mexico City, you can find a lot of nice places. We also, sometimes we do crazy things. For example, putting a, a baseball uh, playground in the in the in, in uh, midtown, it's it's crazy. Well, well we also have uh, more uh, kind of different architectures, but for us uh, these days, the most important thing is that we are right now uh, running one of the largest uh, uh, elixir and airline groups uh, in the world, uh, and 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 for us, well, it's it's really really great uh, to know about that. Uh, the community is growing very fast there. Uh, we are, as you can see, more or less like 1,000 uh, 1, people right now in the group. And more or less in the, we have meet, uh, meetups there uh, every month. And we have uh, an assistance of more or less like 50 or 60 people. So it's, it's really nice. It's really, really nice. And well, also I want to, to promote, of course, that we, we are running uh, with the help of uh, Erlang, uh, Erlang Solutions. Uh, this, is, this is going to be the second time, the second uh, Elixir uh, factory like there. So hope that, of course, you can, you can be there. Uh, in fact, last, the, the last year we sold out in just three weeks, the, the complete uh, venue. So that's also very, very amazing. This year is going to be also great and in a great place. Uh, and of course, as I told you, everyone is invited. So hope that maybe you can, you can go to Mexico and you can also have a great food and a lot of things over there. So, okay, well, what is happening uh, in Mexico and that is related to, to Elixir and Erlang? Uh, first, uh, there we have uh, some uh, very specific requirements about uh, electronic invoices. Uh, around uh, uh, like uh, almost 10 years ago, uh, we started doing some uh, uh, progress about uh, doing everything in, uh, in electronic, electronic documentation. Uh, and in, in, in fact, two years, uh, two years ago, uh, the government uh, said that the electronic invoices were, uh, were mandatory for every transaction in the country. Uh, so we have more or less that, kind, uh, that amount of uh, uh, people that needs to uh, do every, every transaction uh, using electronic invoices. And the, most import the other important thing is that the government is pushing a lot about doing more and more and more uh, documents uh, using everything in, in electronic. So, uh, we, I have these statistics. Uh, for example, th that is the company where uh, we, are do we were doing uh, this project. And this is from the, uh, one year ago, at the end. 
So we, we were more or less at, at the third place uh, of all the companies in Mexico uh, doing el electronic invoices. And uh, for the end of this year, we will be there. Yeah. So we are getting a very, very fast growth. Uh, the company is handling more or less like uh, 700 million uh, transactions by the end of this year. Uh, and well, uh, if you look at the, at, the, at the last one, we are more or less like 44 transactions per second. So uh, thinking about here, about uh, this place, maybe you can say, what? Really? Just that? <laughs> Because I really, I really understand that here, uh, especially uh, everyone that is doing some Erlang and Elixir stuff, almost all the time talk about and maybe hundreds, thousands of transactions per second. So when I say, well, we, we, are, we just need to handle 44, it's like, well, it's not a big deal. So why? Why we decided to start using Erlang and Elixir? Uh, of course, it was not about performance or throughput, yeah, because it's, well, you can you can do that you know, using Java or PHP. <laughs> so that's not really the big the the the, the, the big thing, yeah. Um, in in our case, uh, it was more about availability and cost reduction, yeah. That's uh, those were, were were the reasons why we decided to start using Erlang and Elixir, and. These are were our requirements for this for this system. Uh, for example, we have clients that have critical business processes that depend a lot about uh, the electronic invoices. Yeah, uh, they can lose a lot of money if we if we don't deliver uh, the invoices at time. Yeah, we, because we need to we need to create the invoice, the electronic invoice, send to the authority uh, in Mexico and also to the clients. So we need to do that uh, uh, online and need, and need to be very, very reliable. Uh, so the system needs to be uh, available all the time. Yeah? And the, the last one, we, when, we are, when we start uh, checking the, the, the legacy system, we, we, we saw that we, we were paying a lot of money for the infrastructure. Uh, it's, it was crazy. That, uh, yeah, because when I when I saw the statistics and I saw that we were handling at, at that time like uh, 20 transactions per second, and when I st I start to see the the infrastructure and all the the servers, I say, oh my God, it's I can't believe it. No, why we have a lot of uh, infrastructure and servers in, and we just have so that uh, a little amount of uh, of transactions. So. I really was scared about that, and especially because we are start to see this this graph. Now that's the that's the grow. Uh, we when we start the project, we were there, yeah. So and when we uh, we finished uh, we finished the project, we were we were there. So. Uh, we were very, very, uh, very worried about the, the the growth and how to handle that with the with the with the with the previous system. Uh, just to that you can understand a little bit more about the process, uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, we we have a just we we receive a request for the client. Uh, we do some uh, validations about the schema, the structure of the of the information, the data that we received. Uh, we also have a lot of rules about uh, uh, how, uh, what is valid in the in the data, and so we need to validate a lot of things. That's maybe more was one of the most complex part of the of the, of the system. Uh, and then we we create the document because we we have a specific uh, format that we need to we need, we need to follow, and then we do a, a digital signature. Uh, using a special uh, a special uh, ap appliance, uh, and then we, when we have everything everything done, then we deliver that document to the authority, to the tax authority, and our clients. That's that's it's, it's looks very very simple. Okay, well, so let's start talking about the the, the legacy system. So. 
once upon a time, this was more or less the a very simple um, diagram to see to see the system. You see, for example, in the upper hand, wow, yeah, we have uh, 15 servers just to handle that amount of uh, of transactions. Uh, everything was uh, was in. We also have a client, uh, a Java client. This one, the the the, the one that appears here, is for was for batch processing. We we need to have a client uh, installed in the in with our clients in the in their infrastructure, uh, so they can put the the documents in their servers. So and then the programs uh, reads all the data and start to send that information to uh, to the to the service to the central service. Yeah. And well, we have Java servers, we have uh, as a database SQL, SQL server, yeah, and we have the hardware security module. That that was a requirement for the authority, that because we need to, ha to handle in that in that appliance the the private keys that we use in order to do the the certification, yeah. So that that was very important to have uh, uh, all the time. Um, These are the characteristics, uh, the characteristics for the servers. Uh, so you can see that we're, we're huge, <laughs> taking into in, in account that the, the, the amount of, of uh, transactions are, are very, very low, honestly. And those, th these are the physical servers, and this is the, the specification for the Java servers. Yeah. So a lot, especially, uh, they normally consume a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, of memory. And that was really, also really funny at the beginning because we say that Windows, Windows Server, and then uh, you can see that they are using Apache uh, on top of Windows. So was 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 really weird that we we found we we found that I don't know it was, and then we start to doing some testing. So we start to st stress the system in order to know more about. Well, okay, we can handle the the loads or, or the future load with the with the with the system, and then we start to to do this, and of course it crashed. <laughs> yeah, so it was like a like a, oh my god, uh, it's uh, I think that we have a really really big problem. Uh, so. Uh, what was the status in, at, at that moment? Well, we have a lot of downtimes uh, because of memory leaks. Uh, why? Because uh, in, in, in a lot of places uh, in the code base, we have, for example, a lot of uh, very, very old uh, version of the libraries. Yeah, and, they, and those libraries have a lot of memory leaks. Uh, they uh, never, never update those libraries for, I, some of them for like, Eight years, seven years, so you can imagine that. Uh, because of the first, uh, they start to uh, doing some copies of the system. Yeah. So, for example, we have a ver one version of the of the of the complete uh, ser uh, services, and they then copy the complete stack into another servers, in order just to uh, have to manage more or less the cl the crashes and try to isolate. The problems the, the, because they, if, if maybe some crash, then, then they can switch to the other one, and uh, you can imagine that. And then you can start to understand why we need to a lot of servers for for doing that. Uh, of course, the, the the copies weren't synchronized, so maybe in one server we have version one, and the other one we have version seven, and another one we have se uh, version six. So uh, was also a nightmare. And of course, it consumes a lot, a lot of resources, no? uh, memory, especially memory, uh, because uh, we uh, we were running those uh, on application servers. So just for the application servers, you you, you just need at least two gigabytes more or less of RAM. So so uh, more or less you need like five, six gigabytes just for running one service. So it was was a lot. And. We have other problems, for example, that uh, fixing simply box uh, takes too long. Really, really, uh, uh, the cycles for, for doing something, yeah, uh, 
uh, fixing bugs, adding new features, everything takes a, lo a, a long time. Yeah, because uh, everything, of course, was manual also, especially for the testing. So uh, if we try, for example, to test uh, more or less a complete uh, test suite by hand, uh, takes like more or less like two months. <laughs> So, because of the complexity of the logic, the complexity of the all the, the the cases, so in practice, was that impossible to do, right? Yes. We we just do some smock testing, and in maybe two weeks or something like that, and okay, I just try to hope that <laughs> everything will be fine <laughs> in production. So, uh, we also have uh, a problem with the where uh, we have some um, uh, rules that were uh, general to the, to the process, but mix it with specific rules from clients. So the typical case when you start to see in the code and you find if client one, then do this. If client two, then do this. <laughs> uh, and mix it everything. So uh, we were using a very old li li Java library for PDF generation. Uh, it's a, the name is FOP. Maybe one, one, uh, some of you know about the about the library where you can uh, generate uh, PDFs uh, and you use uh, an XML templates and and we have uh, a lot of them, yeah. And and some of those templates were very very complex, yeah. We're not just we're not just uh, 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 documents to translate, but also includes uh, code and and formulas and a lot of things there. So uh, some of them were like, like uh, in the order of 2,000 two lines uh, of code uh, inside of just one template. So, and, and the problem is that they are, be, are, they are very specific to the, for the clients because one client wants the, the, the invoice to be in a, in a specific uh, structure with the with the logo with the a lot of things that they they want so that's why the the templates were very very complex uh, so well as you can see a lot of problems so when we've finished to see everything yeah so we say okay well uh, Please, <laughs> please. Uh, we start to. That's what we feel. Uh, uh, was we were really, really worried about about what what uh, what we can do about the about the system because we were more or less like uh, at the middle of the year, so we have more or less like six months in order to do something because we were expecting a lot of growth at the end of the year, yeah? Because especially at the end of the year, we, we, we have a, a, a spike of uh, requests. So uh, what we did? Okay, of course, we, we ask for the rewrite, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's the only way, no? So when we, when we find something like this, we all the time say, okay, let me, let me rewrite, no? But we say, okay, wait, wait, wait. No, uh, it's not that easy. No, why? Because we 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 know about that. No, we have heard about the stories about uh, the rewrites and the consequences if you don't do that uh, with uh, very carefully. So also we know about this one. Yeah. Because, yeah, no, yeah, you find and say, oh, yeah, this is crap, yeah, it's it's that's very easy, no, and you can just say that, and then let me let me do this because I really know how to do this, no, uh, I'm the only one that can uh, really know how to do this, fine, but you uh, at the end you 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 have just or now you have two systems, no, with the same maybe with the same problems, so we start to thinking, okay. Do we really need to rewrite everything? Mm -hmm. So we were thinking a lot of, uh, and, and finally, we we agree uh, in this strategy. Okay, so safe. Okay, first, 
Yeah? Fix as much as possible the old system. Yeah? So we say, okay, let's, let's try to see if we can fix this mess yeah? in Java. Right? So, and just, just in case, I start to, to train people uh, in the inside of the team to know about Erlang and know about Elixir. Yeah? So we start to do uh, those things at the beginning. Next, replace the Java client. Yeah? The Java client that, if you remember in the, uh, in, in the diagram uh, in, uh, in the left, uh, was, a, was a Java client. And was also a nightmare in, in, in especially for for uh, support, because you can imagine you have different clients with different servers, different configurations. So for troubleshooting was also very very difficult because sometimes some clients uh, call you and say, "Okay, I have a problem because I the the problem uh, doesn't run." So I didn't I, why, I didn't I didn't need to understand why. And you start to see, okay, well, what, what's, your, what's your server? It's Windows, Windows 95, <laughs> it's, it's Windows XP, it's Windows Server, it's uh, Linux, which version of Linux? Uh, do you have uh, what, which version of the Java Virtual Machine? So it was very, very difficult because uh, the, 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 the program, the client, uh, has a lot of dependencies, external dependencies. Yeah, so it was very difficult to try to to do to, to do troubleshooting. Uh, that's why we decided to just uh, just go. I'm going to explain more about that. Uh, and we start to do to doing some small projects in Erlang and Elixir. Yeah, no critical, no critical ones, but just to start to understand for the team to know more about the platform. Yeah, and then. At the end, if we see that we still need to rewrite, then maybe we'll be ready, maybe, yeah, for that moment. Yeah? And if not, of course, <laughs> get fired for incompetence, right? <laughs> so, <sighs> okay, no? Sounds like a good plan, okay? Let's try it. How long can it take, <laughs> right? It will be, I don't know, weeks, no? And of course, what can go wrong? Okay? So, we start fixing the old system. Mm -hmm. We made some changes to the, to the Java system uh, in order to support uh, the, the, new, the new load that we were expecting at the end of the year. Uh, we updated uh, most of the libraries. Uh, the operating systems, the application servers, a lot of, that was a lot of work. Uh, we, uh, we select some parts of the, of the system in order to rewrite those parts and, and replace, in some cases, replace a complete modules. Yeah, but we, we try more or less to maintain the same, the same code base. We also imp imp improved the deployment system because that was also very, very painful. Because uh, at the beginning, when, when you want to deploy something, the, 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 team in, uh, the, the infrastructure team ne uh, needs to copy the class files. Not, not, we, we were not using jars. So you, when, you when you try to do the deployment, you go to the to uh, 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 in the in the file system, copy the, cl the, the, dot cl the dot class files, and put in the production server, yeah, by hand. <laughs> so <laughs> I, that's why I was I was crying at that, that moment. Uh, uh, we also have a problem because we change uh, data center. Don't do that, <laughs> never. <laughs> Especially if you are in the middle of that kind of uh, changes, uh, we say, well, well, it will be easy, no? But no, it, it was not easy. Uh, so yeah, really, please, please don't do this. If, uh, uh, just try to do some, just one thing at a time, no, try to do a lot of things. 
Uh, we were able, we, we were, uh, able to remove some copies of the system also. We tried more or less to centralize, we changed some services and tried to centralize some, some parts in order to just have one version of, the, of, the, of one of the services. And well, <sighs> for the, at the end of the year, we were able to manage uh, the load. So we, we were safe, at least for that year. Yeah, and, and of course we, we were fine for more or less like two years, I think, more or less in the, in the, at, that, at the time. So, okay, that was the, that was the, 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 the services. What about the client? Well, we start doing the, 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 the rewrite of the client using Go. And well, why Go? Uh, because it eliminates dependencies. Yeah? And that's fine. That's very, very fine and good for us because uh, we just, you just can uh, create a, a binary. In fact, we, we, in, uh, we include a, a SQLite. And we embedded SQLite inside of the binary. And the binary was more or less like uh, eight, eight megabytes, more or less, and was everything in, in size. So we just need to copy the, <coughs> the, the Go program, the binary, uh, to the machine clients, and, <coughs> and everything was, was perfect. No, uh, <coughs> it also Go, Go also supports uh, multiple platforms, so for us it was also very very uh, good that because some of our clients uh, need uh, Solaris, uh, Linux, uh, Windows, etc. No, and, and and Go supports very old versions of Windows. Yeah, so <coughs> that was was very important, and well, <coughs> it has also good support for concurrency, and it's fast. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But why go well? We, I, I, for that part, we really we don't really need high availability. So, uh, go. It's okay for that. No, no. I, I don't have any problem with that. Next, we we start to train in the team. So uh, we start creating a today uh, today's. Uh, tutorial uh, where we uh, try to uh, teach more about uh, the Beam, uh, the Erlang, and Elixir. Uh, we start giving that uh, uh, course for free for one and a half year, and we start to receive a lot of feedback about, about that. No? Uh, about, OK, ma, no, that part is, is not clear. We need to change this. We need to add more exercise. We need to change the order. We, so a lot of things. And was great, really, really great. And, <coughs> and in that period of time, we, <coughs> we trained more or less like 100 people. Yeah, <coughs> was, was really fun. Uh, and, the, and, and, and at the end, we finished with a seven-day uh, uh, class. <laughs> So, uh, so today, when, when, when we uh, want to add more uh, people at the team, we can, we can start doing the, the, the class, and we have more or less, let's say, seven days for that. And then we create the Mexico City Elixir group, yeah? And <coughs> also was, was very good that. Uh, now, we start doing small projects. We, we create a proxy using Dynamo. That was a, a web uh, web framework that uh, Jose Valim uh, created, uh, but I remember that was like one week weekend, like a, f a Saturday that we deploy the the new proxy, and the next week <laughs> Jose Valim announced that it was is going to be deprecated. So, <laughs> so the, okay, well, but well, uh, it the good part is that that. Uh, that piece of code was not critical, okay? So we, we were, we, uh, later we were able to replace that with Phoenix and takes just like uh, three days or something like that just to do that. So no big deal uh, in practice. Uh, uh, the other one that we, we create a hardware security model uh, emulator. Uh, and and what that, I think that, that is uh, really, uh, a really great piece of code because uh, for us, 
Because, for example, when you, when you want to, to try to test the complete system that, and, and, and do a, an end-to-end -end, uh, testing, the problem is that you need, to, you need the, the, the H H H HSM uh, appliance. But that piece of hardware is very, uh, costs a lot of money. And it's difficult that maybe the infrastructure team gives you uh, access to them uh, using, uh, from, from, from the servers that you have uh, for, for development. So for us, it was, was a big deal to create an emulator in, 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 in Erlang, of course. So and what's great at uh, uh, implementing the binary protocol was like 20, 20 lines of code. So, so that was great because now, for example, the, the development team just uh, have everything in the, in, in, in the machine, in the local machine. You can start the, the complete uh, application, and you have com the complete dependencies uh, running at the same time. So you don't need to connect to other, to other services, to other uh, hardware. So uh, you can find uh, that one in, uh, in GitHub. Uh, and we, we, do, we did a lot of uh, proofs of concepts also uh, during that time. OK. Now, the big rewrite. Uh, honestly? We had a lot of luck, yeah, uh, because the governments announced a new version of the standard, yeah. So they say, okay, uh, we are going to implement, we we are going to have a new a new uh, a new standard. It's very a lot of uh, things change. So we say, okay, it's, it's the perfect time because uh, our clients needs to do a lot of things, yeah, in their systems. Because they need to do, they, they need to also to implement the new standard, so that's the perfect time, yeah. Uh, and the good part is that at that moment we were ready because we were doing, uh, we we are doing a lot of the training and the 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 the, 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 the projects, etc. So, and we still had problems with with costs, no. And of course the uh, the development cycle that still was very very painful, so. Uh, we we create a team of five people, uh, two doing the, the development, one person uh, helping helping us with the with the deployment, and two more doing the test. Yeah. So uh, the the last the last ones were uh, people that uh, didn't uh, know anything about programming, because they they uh, they were just uh, people doing uh, test cases, doing the, the design. But they start to learn uh, Elixir and Erlang, and they were the ones that write the the, the complete test suites, yeah. And and was I think that was was good for us. So we do the we wrote the first version in six months, yeah. And we start with just one Phoenix app, yeah, a kind of monolithic uh, Phoenix app. We just say, okay, one, I want a new, new Phoenix application, and we start doing everything just inside of that. But that was wrong. So we rewrote <laughs> the system one time uh, in three months uh, using OTP, yeah, doing some changes to, so in order to uh, create OTP applications. And I think that was uh, a, a much better uh, uh, way to do the things. And we also restructured the, the complete system also using the umbrella project, uh, but that takes just one, uh, took just one week for do that. So, so okay, that was the preview system. Yeah, we have need to support SOAP, by the way. Uh, we have the 15, uh, 15 servers, and this is the new, the new diagram uh, with just four servers. <laughs> yeah, so we finished using just four servers, and and the reason that we have four is because we have redundancy in hardware. Because if not, we'll be just enough with two servers. Yeah, but the only reason to have four was because we we have just uh, um, a, a, a copy of the system and be ready if anything goes wrong. But if not, it will be enough just with two. So we have now the Go client. Uh, um, 
in the in the left, and we have now the the server running Erlang Elixir. Uh, we need to maintain the Java service that creates the PDFs. Why? Because of the the, the templates. Uh, we evaluate evaluate uh, the time in order to move the the templates to another another uh, options to in order to generate the, the PDF was not uh, it was uh, no it was not a, an option because it will take a lot of time and uh, will be a lot of risk to try to move everything and to uh, will be a, will be a, uh, difficult to do the migration of the clients so that's why we say okay that part we are going to maintain in java and we are going to call that services uh, from Elixir and Erlang. Yeah. Uh, we also uh, use a C library uh, using Python, and we we use ports uh, in order to create a, a pool, a pool of uh, of processes, and then sending the documents for validation. Yeah. The reason is that for uh, uh, the XML library that we have in Erlang, uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, but uh, when we tried to use uh, that, uh, that library, uh, the problem was that it did it, uh, the library doesn't give you a detailed information when you have errors about the structure or about the content of the XML file. And for us, that was very important because you need to, that, to send that report to the client in order that the client can fix the problem in the document. So in some cases, the, the XML library uh, for validation uh, that is in, 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 in Erlang is fine because they can say, okay, the structure of the XML is, is wrong and this is the node and okay. But sometimes you'll say, the XML has a problem and that's it. <laughs> So, so it, that's not that's not good. So that's why we find another library, and and we and we find that library, but we use ports in order to do the the request in order to validate the the XML structure and then return the the, the perfect errors to the clients. Yeah, that's why we we start we we use that uh, Python and C uh, program, and we start using uh, in production the uh, the DHSM uh, emulator in order to do some uh, some signatures, the digital signatures. So this is the the new version. If you see inside of the service, uh, we have that one, that structure. Uh, Phoenix is just one a little uh, layer, yeah. Just just is the one in blue, yeah. That's the only one that is is really Phoenix. And everything else is just OTP, yeah, OTP applications or modules that not, uh, doesn't depend uh, at all about Phoenix. So, for example, we have a router for the documents because we are going to, when we receive the request, we are going to be able to check the the type of the document that we need to create and then uh, define which which is going to be the flow. Yeah, for that for that document because has different they, they are going to have different uh, uh, stages. Uh, so we have the validations, the creation of the invoice, uh, the, the digital signature, and then we have all the also the the ones that are uh, um, in the right. Uh, some of them are uh, processes that are in background. Yeah, that they run um, so for some periods of time in order to send. For example, a document to the authority, or sending that information to the client by email or other uh, other or other forms. This is the the the, the characteristics of the server. Yeah, and okay. This is more or less the, the final timeline. Yeah, and it just took three years. <laughs> so. Take a little more time <laughs> what we were expecting. So the finish. So the new system use uh, uh, PDF generation using Java, but no longer uses application servers. That's also great. 
Yeah, you, we just just uh, create the, the jar, a jar, and then run the jar, and that's it. And perfect, F perfect for infrastructure. Uh, the the schema validation using Python, the Python library, we have better performance and latency. And for development, we use Postgres. And in, when we put the system in production, we st we still using SQL Server. That because we we need we we have to maintain that. Uh, that was not an option to change the the the, the database manager. Uh, the deployment for deployment we use Ansible and Erlang releases. Uh, the test suite is more or less like one one thousand tests more or less, and and it takes more or less like five minutes to run. Yeah, and. It's awesome, really, really awesome that we can uh, really f uh, feel comfortable when we are going to rele when f release a new version or fixing some bug. Uh, it feels better. Uh, you can develop and test everything without any external dependency. And we also include a single sign-on service in our line. Yeah, uh, that also w works, works fine. Uh, no memory leaks, of course. Uh, we centralize the management of errors, and we, we can reduce the code base from more or less that amount of Linux code in Java to that one uh, in Elixir. Yeah. So, to just to finish, this was one the, the graph for, for the for the Java version. This one is for the for the new one. Yeah, for the transactions per seconds. In the case, remember that graph <laughs> when the system crashed? OK. Yeah. This is the, the new one. Yeah. So for, CP, for, for CPU, well, uh, during, the, during, during, during the testing, of course, uh, Erlang is, is using all the cores. And great, no? Less than one gigabyte of memory. Yeah. Uh, so, final words. It can take a long time, and so be prepared for that. Yeah. Uh, you will need support. Yeah, for from the CEO, of course, because yeah, it's it's going to be more difficult. Uh, you need to define a training path, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I found that the team really loves Erlang and Elixir. Right? When when they when they understand the concept, they understand about how to use uh, uh, everything related to uh, OTP and supervisors, and they, they when they they understand the benefits, they really love the platform. Yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, be patient. Sometimes you need to wait for the right time. Uh, you are going to support the old system, also for a long period. Yeah. And Erlang is awesome for binary protocols. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, you, know, you don't need to trash everything from the old system, right? So be open to reuse le le legacy code. Uh, sometimes you can trash everything. Yeah, and that's fine. Uh, but Erlang is good to orchestrate other systems. Yeah, so for us, it's working. Uh, don't be afraid of changing direction yeah? and make big changes, especially when you are doing a, a, the, the, a complete new one. Uh, and for us, that, that uh, last point is, uh, is important. Like, it takes us like four months, more or less, to have someone to understand and use OTP. OTP, yeah? Uh, you, of course, if uh, you, can, you can give the, the right training and the mentoring to end up that process, uh, we think that four months is okay. So they can really understand why, when to use OTP, in which parts, and the supervisors, everything. Yeah, I think that that's a good uh, time to do that. Yeah. So, so thanks. And well, see you in Mexico. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.